It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes, it's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Diller. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, we're back for 2022, despite last year. Happy New Year, listeners. That's right. We are recording this on the 2nd of the month. It is time for a new year, hopefully a better schedule to watch things safer uh situations to go see them in and so on and so forth mike but we're here we made it barely barely we barely eked out of 2021 <laughs> i didn't think I, it was close uh it even it even took betty white at the last second from us so um, oh my gosh i mean i don't know if this is the the right time to uh say it you know obviously all of the uh eulogizing for betty white is a hundred percent deserved but also she was a fan of comedy and i don't know mm-hmm. if this is in bad taste but if there was any celebrity to ever fake their own death and then <laughs> reappear at their birthday party on live tv I mean, like I've been I've been going through like kind of like the the, the legitimate thought process in my head of just like, OK, well, if they really wanted to do it, what would the planning look like? She would have to like lay low somewhere because she couldn't be seen by anybody. But it would be like if any celebrity could kind of get away with it and be more popular after faking their own death, it would be Betty White. Like nobody else could pull it off. There were... And you, ha- you, you would have to be explicitly elderly to do it, too, because like nobody cares if like somebody like you know, in their forties, like fakes their death and then comes back. That just seems like crass. Right. But like, she's old. It's just like how you can't arrest old people for stealing batteries. Right. Mm-hmm. You're just like, Oh, I'm just old. So I, I don't want to take anything away uh, from uh, our loss of Betty White. But if, if this, if it could happen, if this could ever happen at any point in history, like this could be the time. So I'm just, I'm just calling my shot right now. Betty. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll put you down as um, <laughs> possible return. Yeah. Uh, I did see like three magazines um, at the bookstore, like celebrating her hundredth birthday. I'm like, oh, uh-huh. oh, the <laughs> magazines are printed well ahead of time. Um, well, so I, I did, that. I did see a tweet that said she had lived through more than like 17 leap years, right? Yeah. So if you add all that up, she did still technically make it to a hundred. If oh, you're just purely counting like chronology of like somebody's yeah. body, so there yeah. you go. Well, this isn't the Betty White uh, podcast, sadly, so we'll get into this. <laughs> we're going to go with our, with, uh, over our list of upcoming uh, scheduled movies for this year. Uh, we're going to talk about Doctor Strange and Batman trailers. There's some Flash movie casting uh, that surprised even me and more. Yeah, well, like Chris said, it's a new year. Same us. We'll still yep. be talking about the nerdiest stuff on the internet. Uh, Mm -hmm. 50-ish weeks out of the year. Um, We're almost up to episode 365 so soon. If for any reason anybody would ever want to go back and listen to ancient superhero news, right? Uh, You could binge us uh, (laughs) once a day for a whole year. That would be insane. Don't do that. But I just, it's a nice number to see, right? I was trying to figure this out. I believe we started in 2015. So this would mark the beginning of our eighth year of doing this yeah. right yeah uh, sure sounds about right i'm not doing eight. the math in my head at the moment yeah i think i think it's not eight full years we're just starting our eighth year so i'm like oh this is uh we've, we've been doing this a hot minute and um we're still not getting paid for it so we gotta figure out how, how to do that <laughs> you know i uh, think uh, i think the answer is probably somewhere on the blockchain uh-huh. uh, an nft maybe mm-hmm. we make our own cryptocurrency i, I don't I'm, know what the kids are doing these days i'm a proud owner of an nft now um because oh yeah you got oh, I, was, I was gonna ask you about that have you have you seen the nft yet? i did have you filed through yep, the paperwork I, it showed me i i own it i did all the, the stuff it's in my wallet if you will and it is like the most disappointing thing i've ever <laughs> experienced in my life uh, i might screen record it or right click save as for you later mike to take a look at this like a little like maybe 10 frames of of uh, like an intro of something i don't know it's really weird, so. um definitely oh, not my <laughs> <laughs> not my forte, not something I'm going to be investing in this year. For sure. So you're saying maybe that's not how we monetize the podcast is through Spider-Man NFTs. No, well, actually, if you could just create our avatars and change the colors on them, 
create a bunch of them with just change colors. We could probably do that. They, they I think we should just colors. go down. We each go to our own local parks and we just sell hot dogs. Because yeah. I feel like the uh, the ROI on just like a Costco hot dog flipping one of those is going to be yeah. better than us dabbling anything close to a blockchain. Yeah, I own a hot dog roller, and you can get uh, all those up in like four minutes. So I feel like I'm oh I'm, yeah, I'm this <laughs> you're ready to go. We're, we're starting a new business: superhero yeah. themed hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Superhero. Use that dog. green ketchup that we all grew up with, right? Remember in the '90s when they oh, invented yeah. new colors of ketchup? Green, there was purple. purple. There's green, man. Oh yeah. Well, I, I'm a big fan of those new um where they mix the, the two flavors together, like mayo chip or like. Oh, you're the you're the one buying those. No, I didn't buy <laughs> I, any of them, but, I, but I'm a fan of what they're doing with them. Uh, you're just a you're just a fan of the innovation in general. You know, if correct. we're on if we're on the topic of food, we got uh, over the holidays we got a uh, a gift of an air fryer. Oh. Which uh, which was fun because we had to uh, pack it in our suitcases and bring it back to the West Coast. So I'm sure those things look like a bomb yeah. when they uh, show up in the through the TSA X rays. But they've probably seen enough air fryers now since they're since the the appliance is so proliferated yeah. uh, out there. So it safely got back here. We air fried a couple stuff, and I was like, is this what all the hype is about? Uh, I mean, it was cool. I like the fact that I don't have to preheat. I think mm-hmm. I think that's the thing that nobody gets across to you with an air fryer. Is not so much that your food is, like, getting crispy, but, like, I don't have to wait 15 minutes yeah. for this oven to get to, like, 350. So you, that's kind of the game. That, that's, that's, go. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the game changer over yeah. here in the in the Royer yeah. household. Well, yeah, we, we haven't talked. We had, we had the holidays. Um, actually, uh, me and Mike got to get together this season, this holiday season. We – what spent four to five hours hanging out? Um, <laughs> yes, uh, and Krista uh, wrongly corrected me. I was under the assumption that he was over four hours away from where we were visiting in the Midwest, and he was actually only two. So yeah. it, he could have made his sacrifice seem so much more. It did. Uh, but he was like, "No, it's only two hours. We just drove up real quick." I was like, "Oh, I thought you were like rearranging your entire life just to see me." So no, I do. No, pr- I, I do appreciate it though. I, I did not. I, I stayed later than we want. We had a good time. It was a fun conversation. We literally, if anyone wants to, we, we sat in the living room and talked the whole <laughs> the whole time. Just um, the same stuff we do here. <laughs> pretty much. It, it was it was it was a, it was a really really good time. Um, and uh, you know, I was, I was glad we got to do that because we haven't got to see each other in what two years? Almost a little over two years. Yeah, I almost uh, forget what face the is wedding. attached to this voice I talk to every week. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, the one that looks exactly like the avatars you drew. <laughs> so, uh, we've got that going for us. So yeah, we got to hang out. You know, um, I hope everyone had a good holiday. I got some, um, I got an X Men arcade stool uh, from the original X Men game. So you know, that's my superhero related. Uh, but was, oh, and my wife got me that Marvel History of Marvel Studios hardcover. The the two, the you oh, know that great. big one they just released. Um, that's I, I opened it and, and you know it brought me back to about ten years ago. We both did that history of Marvel Studios crossover for, for <laughs> oh, yeah. your artwork and, and, and uh, comic UI. And I'm like, they stole our idea, those bastards. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so we're the only ones ever thought to uh, chronicle the, yeah. the story of the MCU. And I, think I, was, I, feel, yeah. I feel like I should uh, I should mention, uh, since we're talking about uh, little gifts, uh, my brother-in-law got me the uh, Wolverine Claws. You yes. know, the ones that uh, you put in between your, your fingers and you can pretend that you're Hugh Jackman. And, like, these things are beefy. Like, these things are, like, the real freaking deal. Uh, they are very heavy. Uh, if you have, like, a bench grinder, like, you could literally sharpen these to all be knives. Uh, they're very fun. Uh, like, I almost wish they were lighter just so they could be a little bit more uh, fun to carry around and hold. But, like, you do feel lethal when you're holding these. So... <laughs> Uh, I think you can just go on Amazon and just type in Wolverine I, Claws. And I think they're like 20, 30 bucks or something. I don't know how they're pulling that off. but uh, I thought you had the, I, the, the pork tender, like the pork shredder <laughs> at first. Um, yeah, well, that it, was really it, cool. It was a fun childlike moment to put those things on and then tear through some uh, cardboard boxes after opening nice. gifts. But Nice. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's probably about as nerdy as my holiday got. Yeah, pretty, pretty solid. Pretty solid. Well... In that case, let's let's jump into this. Uh, so we're gonna do some catch up here on stuff we've watched uh, over the past couple weeks, and by that I mean past couple weeks. I think I watched one of these the week before, and the rest of them I think yesterday. <laughs> um, so uh, we both were able to catch up as as we have talked about. We are not Harry Potter heads, um, but the Return to Hogwarts special hit HBO Max um, yesterday. I believe yesterday was the first day it was up. Um, mm-hmm. So we, we were both able to kind of tune into that. And what's really cool about this is, and I said, Mike, I would love to see Marvel do one of these in 20 years um, because it was 20 years to the day whenever 
the first, I believe, Harry Potter movie uh, came to the screen, which was uh, 2002. So this was cool to, to see them. They broke it down into four parts, um, right? Four chapters, um, each covering two movies at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought it was kind of interesting to to see the to relive some of the hype of the original Harry Potters and like the the change in how the movies um, looked and and felt over time. Mostly, you know, I always remember the the hype of Harry Potter one and two. They were almost released back to back. There was the whimsy, there was the the the, the charm to them, and then three and afterwards they actually got to like kind of be like oh this is these are serious movies and uh, they talked about some of those choices with the actors yeah and honestly i had totally forgotten how many director directors had touched the series because for some reason i thought it was just two directors i thought christopher christopher columbus did Mm -hmm. the first two and then david yates came in and finished out the franchise but no alfonso Cuarón uh did the third one who went on to make uh the oscar award-winning film roma and i think maybe a few other ones that were nominated and then uh, the other director, which I don't even know, I don't even remember his name. I haven't even internalized him, but he did the Goblet of Fire, and I think he's more of like a British uh, uh, director that has done more stuff across yeah. the pond. So I'd forgotten that so many people had had their hands on the Harry Potter franchise. Um, yeah, but Mike, I think my Mike, big is Mike Newell. <laughs> like um, I asked my wife that I'm like, who did the fourth one again? Uh, it, it was Mike Newell, and I was trying to remember kind of some stuff that he did. Um, but uh, yeah, you're right. He he's definitely nothing. I think over here, I think Donnie Brasco is like the the biggest movie. I think he did that. I would I'd be able to pick out of the lineup. So yeah, yeah. I think I think the biggest takeaway that I have uh, from this uh, Return of the Hogwarts is kind of the the three original cast uh, leads coming together, and they just kind of talk about how um, one of the directors said that they were all like astronauts, right? They were all experiencing something unique that really no one else in the world has quite done right. Like, we've had long-running franchises before, Mm -hmm. right? But, you know, actors ebb and flow, come in and out, schedules change. Like, you know, movies come out in, like, phases. You know, maybe Marvel is probably the closest thing that maybe you can associate with the Harry Potter franchise. But even Marvel, like I said, has different casts of characters that come in and out. But, like, these children, like, literally grew up in this franchise and it kind of seems like it almost emotionally like i don't want to say scarred them but they're definitely different people because they were on film sets their entire their entire uh childhood and grew up with that fame um but i was going to ask you chris since uh uh, our wives are the harry potter stands uh, my wife was crying at the end of it Uh, i think they uh they hit her like in the um, the uh uh, the in the emotional kidneys with uh, ending it with the uh, with the Severus Snape uh, always line and they had the emotional swelling music and all of the mm. the the sweet uh, tidings at the end and he was just like I don't know why I'm crying <laughs> yeah yeah I, I'm, my wife might have been crying I, I had literally tuned out by the end a little bit if I'm gonna be honest with you I was like oh, I'm working on some stuff here and there watching it back and forth it, it was it, nothing against it it was fine but I was just like I'm not as invested in the later parts of the movies as some people were i guess so um yeah it's probably very emotional i just didn't pay any attention if i'm gonna be (laughs) flat honest at that but i i did know um you know um jk rowling they used archival footage from 2019 in this they um but in according to entertainment weekly i thought it was because you know they didn't want her to be part of this i was like oh hopefully but apparently they asked her to participate but her team decided that previous comments were sufficient for the reunion so um, I think I think it's obvious that this was a it was just very strategic yeah. on both ends for sure. And they and they made sure to go out of their way when uh, J.K. Rowling pops up in the documentary. They put this text up in the corner yeah. of like filmed in like 2019. And out of the whole like hour and 40 minutes, she's only in it for honestly, like just a couple of just lines. a couple. Yeah. Yeah, it, so they they're, they're kind of like letting the audience know, like you know, we get it. <laughs> so yeah. just like well, there's just a little bit, you know. We'll but. put the actor at the forefront, but we we know who created this back then. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it, it, it was nice. It, it was fine. It was, it was fun seeing the actors. Uh, I didn't realize, you know, how, um, you know, aged Robbie Coltrane had become. The guy who played Hatton. Oh like, yeah. He, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is, he's he's showing his age now, but um. Yeah, it, it was fun to, to see kind of everything. And the behind, I'm a big fan of behind the scenes stuff. And I think that was the cooler clips. I was always my ears perked up at right, like seeing the mm-hmm. the behind the scenes features and, and footage more than more than anything else. So, um, yeah. So we so we got to catch that. Uh, the other thing um, we both got, I, do we want to talk about this now is the Matrix Resurrections. 
Uh, I mean, we'll talk about it at the at the bottom of the show. We'll yeah. just heads up. We watched we it, and we'll do like kind of like a little, what like Spoil- maybe tiny. Do do we do spoiler free at the end of the show? Well, uh, we we've got three things at the end of the show to kind of catch people up on. We have Matrix Resurrections, Hawkeye, and Book of Boba Fett. So we'll we'll probably just start with the Matrix stuff and be like, okay, um, we'll do some spoiler free and then get into spoilers from then on out. The rest of the episode will be full of you know gotcha stuff stay that, tuned keep yeah. listening to us yes or go watch these things because you you want you want to watch these things no uh, your pause button's broken keep listening you yeah have no that's, choice. that's true that's true also give us a like while you're at it i'll do it at the front of the show mike give us a like <laughs> give us give us a follow um last night i gotta watch disney's encanto now mike you haven't got to be able to see this yet so i will leave this nope. very spoiler free um it is definitely uh, the songs um, were definitely written by Lin Manuel Miranda. Um, mm-hmm. Very much, I hear Hamilton, I hear Moana, I hear you know In the Heights music. Uh, you know how he writes his lyrics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And this is very um, it's fun. It's 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 uplifting. It's bright. It's probably brighter than any Pixar movie that came out last year. Ironically, mm-hmm. so it was a Disney movie. Uh, feels very much in in the vein of like I said, kind of kind of a Moana film um, for sure. Uh, I, I I I recommend it. I think I think some of the the, the songs are, are worth watching. It. The visuals are okay, but you know I think the songs are are worthwhile. Really really good voice acting cast as well. So um, I I think it was a uh, for being on Disney Plus definitely worth the watch, Mike. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to go to the theater. So I'm glad I, I waited a little bit to to catch it at at home rather than go to the theaters. I probably would have tuned out then. So this is this is good to just kind of have it at home. I actually. I even warned my wife. I was like, look, I've got my Nintendo DS here. I might play Diablo while this is on because I, I just don't <laughs> care. End up not picking up the, the, the DS the whole time. So, hey, there um, you go. Next thing I know, the, the movie was over. So I think that's a that's a good sign. Like, I didn't feel the length of it. But it's also a cartoon movie, so it wasn't that long for that. Um, and then you uh, – looks like you got to check out one of the um, more controversial movies lately. Um on Netflix with don't look up and I've not seen this myself. So uh, let me know what you think. Cause I, I'd rather, you know, get your pulse on it than. Yeah. Spoiler free thoughts uh, for don't look up. Uh, basically what we're running into here is deep impact meets idiocracy <laughs> meets the big short, which is not too surprising because the big short was uh, created, directed by uh, Adam McKay. And this, this film don't look up is also an Adam McKay film. Uh, it is an absolute wild ride watching this movie. I totally understand if uh, there are people out there that are polarized on this movie. I almost kind of have the same opinions uh, about uh, the Matrix Resurrections, which we'll talk about later in the show. I, I get where like the um, where the uh, polarization is coming from, but I think when you look at both of these films, uh, they're both saying something, right? Mm-hmm. They're both coming at it with kind of unabashed uh, ideas of, of of what they want to make. So at least you'll get something out of it. You're not just going to be kind of like on your phone scrolling around and or playing Diablo on your Switch uh, because there is stuff happening in this movie. And uh, some of it will make your eyes roll. Some of it will make you furious, but it'll make you angry. Uh, but also entertained at the same time. It's a crazy film. I think everybody should watch Don't Look Up because it's like a little bit of a PSA, but also it's just interesting filmmaking as well. It's it's very strange. It's kind of... I'm still digesting it, even though I watched it a few days ago. But, I mean, it's an all-star cast. This cast is, like, stacked. Meryl Streep, Timothy Chalamet, Jennifer Lawrence, Leonardo DiCaprio... Um, many more in this film uh chris i'd love to see your take on it when you when you watch it um i think i think kind of like the biggest criticism that i've been hearing is that the balance of farce kind of goes a little bit too far like if you've seen the big short from adam mckay he's taking a very complicated subject like uh the 2008 recession um and the housing crisis you know and he's trying to bring a little bit of entertainment a little bit of like slick edge to it but also just like really good acting to kind of portray this time and he's doing that as well but he's kind of really going all in and you kind of start to feel more of the satirical idiocracy edge to it you know towards the second half of the film so uh just prepare yourself for a weird wild ride and there's also a post-credit scene at the very, very end, which I don't think you would ex- necessarily expect 
with the way this uh, movie ends. So it's just it's just wild. It's just everyone's gonna have an opinion about this movie if they see it, and it's not it definitely not gonna make you go meh. So that's don't look up over on Netflix. And if you absolutely want to watch something that's a knock out of the park, uh, I think everybody should watch it, and it's amazing. It's mm-hmm. Arcane over yeah. on Netflix. I finally finished it. Uh, the 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 series based on a video game that I don't know anything about and I've never played. I don't even know what League of Legends is on. Is it consoles? Is it PC no, only? PC only. It, yeah. Is there a story anywhere involved? Is I don't even I don't even know. But this show is so good and it's like so well crafted i love the story i love the characters i forgot the last time we talked about this i don't know if it came up but Haley steinfeld is the yes. voice actress for the main character vi and i don't know if vi is a character in the video game or or what but she's got like short pink hair she's great in it it's just an awesome show uh it looks beautiful on top of that like it's been a while since i've seen um something animated where like every frame looks like you know a beautiful piece of like concept art out of like an art book that you would buy you know after your favorite tv show or movie um comes out so go watch arcane it requires absolutely no knowledge of league of legends because i don't know anything about it but they created a killer show and this almost feels like masterclass advertising because every time i was watching the show i was like i should play league of legends because if i just kind of get to visit this these characters in this world just a little bit more even playing a bit of a competitive uh what is it? it's not turn-based it's like real time right yeah it's a mobile I think. um yeah it, it's um you have your teams and you're trying to you know cat points uh kill the other team and, and destroy their their tower while they're also you know protecting yours at the same time yeah i mean it, it's like it's 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 really great arcane is awesome it's a setup. I don't know if it's been greenlit for another season, but I would be shocked if it wasn't. I, w- I also wouldn't be surprised if maybe um, Riot... I think Riot Games makes this yes. makes this game. I wouldn't be surprised if Riot Games is like uh, is almost like self-funding this show in a way of just like, uh, okay, Netflix is going to give us this budget. We're going to put a bunch of our own money into it because we're also just kind of making uh, an amazing like nine episode commercial for our game. So like so much love gets put into it like for example i saw on twitter that you know when you're making like a like an animated series or a limited series like you know your artist your storyboard artist your animators like you only have so much time to dedicate to a specific scene or an episode you know or like um an act in it but uh i've i've read that the amount of time that they are given to like focus just on like one little like frame or scene in the show is like tenfold the time you'd get on something else that's on netflix so uh yeah. big huge recommendation arcane might be one of my favorite things to come out of 2021 so big recommendation it, that's over on netflix it, it does have a second season in development um yes. i did see that um that was i think I didn't even think I said that back in November, but you know, this has been out for a while, right? Like this is, I think two months old at this point. Um, but I'm pretty sure if, if I'm, if I'm right, it, Netflix was just a distributor who came along much later um, because they were working on it with, um, is it Fortiche Productions? Fortiche? Is that what, um, the studio who made it, I believe. So hmm. uh, I, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, they come down and do other characters because there's so many characters in League of Legends, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, the 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 few you meet, like you've only met like probably what a handful, five or so. Mm-hmm. That that you know, I could definitely see them, um, actually probably coming down with more like series yeah. based on other characters, even. Like we know, we know, uh, especially lately, uh, Rotten Tomatoes has been a mixed bag, but uh, Arcane is sitting at a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes with a ninety-seven percent. Uh, audience score so uh they shot and they didn't miss so uh go watch arcane please it's so good yeah i was gonna say uh, do they have the meta the metacritic it's saying that no that's that's the game i pulled up the metacritic and it was the game instead of the actual uh (laughs) um it keeps pulling up the game it does not like me to want to look up the actual tv show i'm like okay but yeah it's it's pending tons of awards i mean i've only heard good things from other people as well so uh, even the other people who've not played league of legends so that's that's saying something. Yeah. Now I got to figure out if my uh, my MacBook can play League of Legends or not. <laughs> it, it is OS X. It does say it on there. Um, and it's the game came out in 2009. Just to give you how old. It's um, 12 years old this year. 13 years old this year. So, yeah. Woof. 
Anyway, moving along, let's talk about the rest of this year, 2022, our schedule real quick. We're, we're going to go through some of these. Um, you know, I expect some of these to possibly shift around here and there, but we're going to go through the, the main list of movies we're going to see. The TV shows, um, sadly, haven't given us anything solid, so I didn't put those in here, Mike. Um, but, you know, we do Solid have as in goods. dates, right? Yeah, yeah, dates or even, mm. like, regions of, like, the, the year. Like, is it which quarter, which, which, which mm. season? So I just plan to put the movies in here because these these have dates. These are a little bit bigger. So, um, and we we can talk about the TV shows uh, later. Hopefully, we get some dates um, coming up soon. But first and foremost, this month, Mike, the most hyped movie of <laughs> January, because it is the only month movie in January, is Morbius. Um, the the Sony um, Picture Universe Spider Man movie, um, <laughs> other than Venom. So Morbius is coming this month, whether we like it or not. Um, I'm I'm just more curious about this movie than anything if i'm going to be completely honest with you i don't yeah. know what to expect after watching the uh the venom post credit scene in uh spider-man no way mm-hmm. home uh I'll, I'll just leave it at that if for some reason i haven't got around to seeing the film yet i'm really kind of curious what the machinations of morbius is supposed to be within like the spider-man universe right yeah. you know the rumor mill really spun up after uh, we saw Venom transported into the MCU at the end of Let There Be Carnage, right? Everybody was, like, throwing out all these theories, and now things have kind of pivoted. So I'm curious what in this film is going to stick around. Like, what's the point? Um, yeah. I mean, Jared Jared Leto, he's a, he's a tour de force, right? You know, whether he's in a great movie or a bad movie, right? So yeah. he's definitely going to be acting in this film. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. that's, that's one way to put it. Uh, he, yeah, I, I think also you know this movie is interesting because it has you know it shows Spider Man artwork. It has Vulture from the MCU. My theory, I sit hard and heavy that Morbius and Venom are in the, the Amazing Spider Man universe because we don't know what happened with that. Um, you know how, what what existed kind of after that that crash, and that was the last known Sony owned uh, universe. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess we might see. You know, an amazing Spider-Man um, references here and there, but I, I don't know yet. So, um, and then he also made a Venom reference. Who the hell knows where this is going? And who knows if <laughs> even those scenes even make it into the movie, right? Like, is this all, you know, just trailer stuff, deleted scenes, stuff shot to fuck with us at the end of the day? So, um, Morbius coming January 21st uh, into this month. So, you got a couple weeks to, to, to do that. Uh, I added this in here because we didn't have much else in February, but Uncharted, the movie, is coming out. And I, I didn't – so a trailer came out a couple weeks ago, right, Mike, I believe, over the holidays. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't watch it. I don't think if you haven't seen it, you should not watch it because apparently it's just all the all the set pieces and story in one trailer. <laughs> uh, so what Sony didn't learn from Spider-Man, they, they, uh, they put into the Uncharted trailer. So um, yeah, well, luckily they have a, the cheat code of Tom Holland's face, right? You know, yeah. his face is attached to now one of the the biggest uh, box office movies of all time. So now, when his next movie comes out, I think that'll help sell some tickets for sure. I I would say it's a it's almost a mathematical guarantee that the success of Spider Man No Way Home is going to benefit uh, Uncharted. Maybe not in a huge way, but I would say it's not a non zero. Uh, function so uh, I man this would be a great scenario if like Uncharted was like an HBO Max movie uh, mm-hmm. like I know that they're not doing that anymore and they're not going to be do doing day and date releases streaming anymore but I would love just to be able to watch this at home in the, yeah. the in the comfort of, of my couch kind of where I experienced the video games right so I, I don't know if I'll be uh, going out of my way to see Uncharted yeah. uh, in the theaters. But, I mean, I like the character. I like Nathan Drake, you know, like Tom Holland. I, it, I'm, I'm hopeful, but it, I'm not uh, I'm not waiting around to see what happens. If I'm desperate to go to the movies, I will go see Uncharted. Uh, mm-hmm. If not, I don't – yeah, I'm just like, it's fine. I, I didn't play the games. I, I played the fourth game, but that was it. So I don't have an affinity – for the franchise. So if this comes, you know, the streaming sooner or later, that's fine. But you know, that's, that's what we got for February. Mike, there was nothing, no superhero movies, but we'll, we'll put Tom Holland there. He's doing great right now. Uh, move along March. Uh, we'll talk about uh, another trailer later, but we have Batman March 4th of this year. Um, feels like this right around the corner, right? We're less than two months away from a Batman movie. Um, when's the last time we had one? 20, was it 2012, late 2012, 2013? It's, it's been a minute. I'll uh, I'll save my thoughts for it because we got a new trailer yeah. for the Batman uh, later in the show notes. So yeah. March, March, 
March 4th. And then right after that, two months later, is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which we also have a trailer for. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's our next Marvel movie for a back into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Doctor Strange was a big, uh, like you said, a tour de force in in Spider-Man No Way Home. So uh, we get to revisit him very shortly after this. I'm very excited. I believe, um, have we, no, I guess we didn't have... Wong or Strange in Eternals or Black Widow, but I guess Shang Chi, right? Like we've almost had sorcerers in every movie so far mm-hmm. um, for Phase Five, so so we might see him, you know, queuing up. This movie has the most amount, most insane amount of rumors and um, rumored cameos that literally you could just name anybody right now, and there's probably an article <laughs> of them being in this movie. At this point, I thought you so. were trying to segue into the next movie. Uh, oh, no. DC Super Pets has the no. craziest amount of rumors swirling around it. Who couldn't be in this movie? Yeah, no. So, yeah, May 5th is that later that month we, get to, we have the luxury of seeing DC Super Pets. The animated movie, it looks fun. I can't knock animated movies. You know, we always get surprised. You know, like I said, Teen Titans go to the movie, and uh, Spider-Man and Spider-Verse surprise us. This has a lot of big actors in it. It could be fun. Probably going to sell a lot of stuffed animals. Um, <laughs> but that's that's about it. So DC Super Pets, uh, that's down the road. In July, right after the 4th here in America, we go see Thor, Love, and Thunder. Um, yeah, I think this is the the movie, I'm the, the live action movie, I mm-hmm. should say. I'm looking forward to the most uh, for Marvel this year. Uh, it's just, it's been a while since like we've revisited kind of this sliver of the Avengers, right? You know, when everybody kind of broke up and left after Endgame and went on their own directions, like Thor has just been a really big question mark and we don't know kind of what's going on in these mythic realms, if you will. Uh, sure. We've had a little bit of Loki, but it's been a variant Loki, right? He's yeah. kind of been on his own adventure, detached from a lot of the second half of the of the yeah. MCU. So I'm really curious. And also uh, Taika Waititi. I think everybody, I think this, his last film with uh, with uh, Thor uh, Ragnarok kind of made Taika Waititi a household name. Mm-hmm. And now his career is, uh, is just minted. So I'm curious to see what happens when he goes back to the character. Yeah, I, and there's a lot of um, this one, and I think you know, the next Marvel movie. There's a lot of unknowns, right? We don't know a lot. They're they're mm. they're keeping it close to their chest, other than that poster they said was not real, which then turned out to be real, um, with his war goats, which are cool as hell. So July eighth, Thor: Love and Thunder. The end of the month, July 29th, um, The Rock in his second DC movie of the year, Black Adam, um, coming at us. Um, this has uh, been a project he's been working on for how long now? Like ten years or something like that. So. Um, very interesting that it actually is coming to fruition at the end of the day. Um, so we'll see, go back into the Shazam averse, if you will. Yeah, I think that's the, the only side. that's the only part that kind of gets me excited. I mean, like you can't deny the success and the fame and the star power that Dwayne the Rock Johnson has. But I feel like as of late, a lot of the films I've seen him in, it's just mm-hmm. like okay. It's just the same guy in every movie, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I feel like I'm just kind of getting a little tired of it. Uh-huh. So I, I am happy to revisit the Shazam yeah. universe, though. And I, I don't know. He, he's supposed to be an anti-hero, right? Like, you know, he's fighting for good, but he's also a bad guy. Like, how are they going to make that work in this movie? I, I don't know. I got questions, but, you know, not, not too worried about it. I think everyone else is very, very anticipating for the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2 dropping October of this year, October 7th. Um, mm-hmm. After that little teaser we got, you know, a couple weeks ago, um, Reminded people how good it was, and people are, are excited to to do that. So, another year, another Spider-Man movie, of course. November 4th, The Flash. Um, essentially, what it sounds like, Flashpoint. We saw the one little trailer from, uh, what was it, Fandome, if you will. Mm-hmm. The return of Michael Keaton as Batman after, you know, how many years? 30 years of not being Batman. So, um, this one's got a lot of potential to reset the DC Universe or, you know, have a lot of fun. Yeah, we have some rumors to talk about in the mm-hmm. show, so yeah. stay tuned. This, we'll talk about that in a minute. Is this the Flash No Way Home? Is that what we're going to call it? <laughs> I think so. Uh, that's what it sounds like to me. Uh, November 11th, a week later, falls out with Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Wow. Biggest question mark of yeah. the year, right? Uh, I don't think this movie will be bad in any way, uh, but, I mean, talk about a crazy scenario to be in to uh, follow up the first Black Panther yeah. film. I mean, the huge success out of that first film – 
with Chadwick and also just the domestic box office. Like that was all of the headlines, right? When the first film yeah. came out was just like, how can one movie make so much money at, in America, right? This is not how this works. We make all of our money across the oceans. Um, so people were just going back, rewatching that film. Everyone yeah. fell in, everyone fell in love, rightfully so, with uh, Chadwick. And, and now that he's gone, and now that the, uh, the parts of the cast are kind of shrouded in um, some anti-vaccine um, yeah. drama, I'm just I'm curious where this is gonna go. And also, they've announced kind of a, that Disney Plus series, and we've seen the Dora Milaje pop up in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, have they popped up in anything else, or was it just I Falcon think they were and the in Winter the, Soldier? Were they in the Black Widow in like that fighting arena kind of thing? Maybe like it, it could be the side character, but I, yeah, I don't. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember, but like so like you know we've seen hints that you know Wakanda is still out there for sure because they've been in other things outside of Avengers Endgame, oh. but. Yeah, where this movie goes is the biggest. I I think the first trailer for Black Panther: Wakanda Forever is going to be one of those trailers that gets mm -hmm. a lot of views. Right, you're going to see the headline: Oh, gets the most views since you know blah blah blah. So, so Spider Man. St yeah, stay tuned yeah. for that. That's going to be that's going to be huge because yeah. it's going to answer so many questions. Yeah, and and probably probably set up some good stuff going forward because you know, um, they only had one movie in the MCU before you know. Um, mm -hmm. Everything was reset, so I'm interested to see where that goes. And I, I don't think that there's, I, I don't think that there's been really any super official announcements either on kind of what the protagonist is going to be in that film yeah. either. So no, I think that's yeah. the biggest question. Yep. And lastly, right, wrapping up the year is December 16th, is Aquaman two. Um, the what is that called? Is it the in the Lost City? Aquaman in the Lost mm -hmm. City. Um, first one's fine. This one's probably a little better. I think you Jason know, Momoa. He pulls good with the moms. I was on my uh, I was on my Southwest flight uh, the other day, and uh, the woman across the aisle from me who had uh, two little tykes in her row, her she decided to fill her time by whipping out her laptop, connecting to the Wi-Fi, and uh, streaming Aquaman one. And her eyes were glued to the screen on <laughs> some certain moments in that mm. film that I think a uh, a mom would love to see from yeah. uh, <laughs> from that film. So yeah. <laughs> stay tuned, moms. Aquaman yeah. two is coming. And and so now detached from Zack Snyder and the, the you know the the uh, Joss Whedon fiascos that you know were kind of bookended Aquaman one so hopefully we get to see a little bit more of a uh, of its own movie right that does its own kind of thing so we'll 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 see that. so that's our list for the year for TV show or movies we'll talk about TV shows later but um, want to get that out of the way before we jump into our news. Good lord, we are already 40-something minutes into this, and we're just getting into the news. So, first and foremost, Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, I was able to pre-order the Steelbook for this already, Mike, so it sounds like mm -hmm. we are only maybe a month or two away um, from the home release. Uh, it didn't really have a date, but, you know, um, on that, but, you know, the fact that I could actually pre-order it, you know, like, a week after the movie sounds like they're prepping for something to come out pretty soon, right? Like Yeah. It seems like with a lot of these um, kind of uh, COVID strategies expiring uh, for Hollywood and they're kind of rolling back to more traditional releases, it seems like the one thing that did stick around is the very, very shortened window. That Was it 45 days between yeah. um between 45 uh, days, release. yeah, a lot of them, yeah, for a lot of studios. So yeah, so I think that's great. <laughs> I'm glad that I don't have to, to wait too long. To, yeah, to it catch doesn't. It. Have, I've checked again. My pre-order does not have a release date, but um, hopefully – We'll see something, you know. Um, this will be out probably February, March at the March at the latest. And, and last... the Netflix and the Netflix streaming deal. I'm still yeah. I do not remember the dates of what those contracts were supposed to be, but at some point in time, all these Spider-Man movies are supposed to be uh, dropping on Netflix. So I'm waiting Making for the way over there. Yeah, uh, and then it also has moved its way up. And I checked this, you know, the other day when I did the show notes, up to the 11th highest movie ever. Um, in terms of a box office revenue. So I'm looking at it right now. It's seen at $1.3 billion worldwide. Uh, 1.36. Um, just trying to see where, where it is overall. Box office mojo, when it was up, bought by IMDb, does not. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a show. Yeah, it work anyway. So um, I don't know where it is overall. Top top movies. Jeez, this, is, this sucks. Um, I don't remember. But anyway, I'm pretty sure it is the 11th movie overall. Um and that's that's pretty good, right? Like all time, like you know, Spider Man, he's he's gonna nothing to shake a stick at. And I'm sure it'll st still keep earning money because I don't think it's had the 
the big Chinese release just yet. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe Chinese New Year is coming up soon, and that's a big, big movie-going holiday. But I do believe China, China does hold back releases you know of its own stuff because it's like oh we want these box office chinese films that we've produced to uh to air on that weekend so i don't really know what the strategy with spider-man is but i'm sure there's more money to come for this film yeah yeah i'm looking at it here you know it's it's got legs it's been number one since it, every day since it came out um so yeah i, I expect it to hit top 10 it's got to pass frozen too which is like one there's another hundred you know million dollars so yeah, man not a somewhere. Not a single peep uh, from uh, Kingsman, uh, the Kingsman yeah. at all. I saw there was a brief marketing window where they were getting like Twitch streamers uh-huh. to talk about the Kingsman just before it came out. And I was like, then I, I have not heard a single thing. I, 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 that's not an, an indication of the quality of the movie at all. I'm just I'm just saying well, uh, it's, nobody it's a, saw it. <laughs> it. Well, it's an R rated film. Um in, in in a sea of other films right now like that are not r-rated so i'd be, i'd be interested to see that what was the other r-rated film that came out this week as well was it matrix matrix right i think matrix mm-hmm. tanked even harder um box office wise but it's not because it's on streaming so mm-hmm. it's 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 a weird weird thing to put that but i i expect to see um kingsman on streaming sooner than later but um spider-man no way home killing it if you've not seen it get out there and see it you can go listen to our review uh we highly recommend you watch this movie very very good time uh a morbius update because i know you're just clamoring for more <laughs> morbius, Mike. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna run with this joke for the next three weeks um apparently it's a 108 minute run time so one hour and 48 minutes including credits uh so usually 10 minutes of credits or so probably an hour and 38 minutes 35 hour 35 38 pretty brisk uh pretty brisk watch it sounds like um well, yeah at least to... uh at least if sony's gonna subject us to these films or keeping them sh- keeping them short yeah i, b- I believe it's just a like three minutes longer than venom let there be carnage was so mm-hmm. um yeah they're they're keeping them concise uh like like we say shorter times mean more butts in seats uh that doesn't mean it's, you know good movie um or bad movie link does not indicate quality but um you know if they're gonna try to fill in the theaters with this um i think they're gonna push the spider-man connections pretty hard this month um and ride this ride the success wave of spider-man through this mm-hmm uh, I would not be surprised if they put an extra scene at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home after the the, the all the post credit scenes that's Morbius related to get people to go see Spider-Man and then go see Morbius afterwards. Yeah, like, we uh, don't don't put that past Sony. <laughs> they yeah. would do that. I'm pretty sure they did that with what, Amazing Spider-Man 2. They had an X-Men trailer at the end of it. So um, that movie sucked. Anyway, um, <laughs> January 28th, 2022, we'll... we'll the guys let you know more about that as it comes through uh this is um this is not a spoiler i feel um but the doctor strange in the multiverse of madness teaser um is now officially available for everyone uh-huh. to watch they released it i believe this earlier this week right or maybe early last week um and we get to you know go through and do that that, that cool thing that you can do with youtube with the, the comma and the period keys i'm chris frame by frame i'm literally doing that right now <laughs> like i'm not even kidding uh i, I keep watching the the scene with not shuma gorath yes. some other one-eyed tentacle monster yes. uh but the coolest part about that scene is uh strange like kind of turns a like uh, a sling kind of a uh, ring portal into a literal buzzsaw and cuts a bus in half. And I totally missed that the first time around yeah. is re- it's really cool. Oh, so yeah, the buzz. <laughs> so that's Gargantos. Um, or, you know, that's what the toys are saying. Um, you know, it could be a host for, for Shuma Gorth. Yeah. Like this, this is a, one of those trailers where I've gone back way too many times, uh, frame by frame, because there's like, what looks to be possibly a cancer universe, which is what I'm calling like this dark one that has like two stranges in it. Um, Cause there's a regular doctor strange and then an evil doctor strange. And I've seen this way too many times. This is not the doctor strange from what <laughs> if I guarantee it. Like we, you even, I even talked about this when we were, we were visiting because at the end of what if he redeems himself by watching over the frozen universe with the infinity stones yeah like, exactly and that that seemed to be a big uh, a big uh story moment that a lot of people were ignoring i mean i get it humans we look for patterns and like oh well we saw an evil, evil doctor strange and what if here's another evil doctor strange put two mm-hmm. and two together um 
I think a big takeaway that I took from Spider-Man No Way Home and this teaser trailer, uh, no spoilers, uh, th- I think we got to give Doctor Strange's uh, wig uh, another another once-over. Uh, <laughs> I, I think they are looking a little... Uh, a little rough and ready i can really kind of see like the hairline just like manifest out of out of nowhere uh i don't know if you can touch that up with special effects but if, if anybody from a from a special effects house is listening to this podcast right now yeah. uh, i think the wigs are wigs are getting a little out of control so uh yeah. that's just a, a heads up yeah and there's, there's also a couple other things in here um that are really we see uh, wanda in her her scarlet witch outfit as mm-hmm. well uh doing something um, there is uh, Mordo has returned. Um, mm-hmm. with he got his, dreads now. He's his longer hair. That's right. That's how you show a passage of time in films. Mike has <laughs> not been that. I've also seen Strange with his, the eye of Agamotto around his neck a few times in a few shots in this. Um, so I don't know what what to make of that. Um, because technically the the stone's gone, right? Like there's there's no reason he would have that. Um, yeah, I can there- figure out. There is a shot where it looks like there's some sort of uh, assault on a kind of uh, a wizard uh, temple. I don't really know exactly. Yeah, um, and there's, there seems to be a, a large person. I don't know if it's a creature, but it's a, it's a humanoid shape, but it looks like they're about 12 foot tall. So I don't know if we're going to be uh, where or how we're explaining that, but right. I thought that was an uh, interesting addition. Where, where are you at with that one? <laughs> we are we are about the uh, the I think like the one thirty one thirty five between one thirty six right. mark. Because right after that, where he horns. puts a, he puts the dragons out of his his arms, doesn't he? Like he, um, he shoots the dragons out of his arms, which looks really really cool. Uh, no, then the next scene is he's got these like these gelatinous red orbs floating around him, and then the yeah. then the lizard shoots yeah, out of his lizard. arms. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so that that actual um, bison guy, he's he's one of the toys as well, I believe. He's actually um, training at the at the school. I don't think he's actually a uh, villain there, but I could be wrong. I don't know. There's a lot of questions we have about this. There's a lot of rumors. Um, Sam Raimi is coming back into comic book movies since uh, his last foray with the Spider-Man franchise. I'm really excited to see him maybe bring some horror elements into this a little bit more. Um, I know it's going to be family friendly, but... Um, I, I really love it when, and I think you agree when Spider Man or not Spider Man, Doctor Strange is powered up, and he's actually like, we're not learning, seeing him learn the spells. He just knows the spells and is mm-hmm. being, you know, kind of badass with them. I mean, that that was some, one of my favorite parts about Infinity Wars. You know, the Doctor Strange scenes when he's fighting Thanos. Um, but um, this this looks to be very ominous, very very crazy. I'm really excited to see it, and this 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 trailer really uh really kind of got me hyped again for it but we, we gotta wait five months sadly but we will moving on amen and the lost quantum mania the bill murray cameo supposedly he will be playing um it's rumored this is a rumor that he could be uh someone called krylar uh who's only had one comic book appearance ever in a incredible hulk thing but he <laughs> is a member of the cation race from the microverse planet kai and that's it uh and i'm like i'd rather him be um, Scott Lang's dad, but whatever. <laughs> a planet in the microverse. All right, I'm down. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Um, again, the microverse. We'll probably see a lot of uh, quantum realm stuff, microverse stuff dealing with this. I don't know how Kang is going to affect this. You know, um, Kang is not known for dealing with the microverse. He's known with dealing with the multiverse. So I, I don't know how they'll cross over, and you know, the microverse just could be, um, you know, a rumored thing because that's what Ant Man does in the comic books, but. We'll follow that and keep you posted on what Bill Murray's up to this this year. I feel like I just saw him in something. Um, the French Dispatch. Yeah, French Dispatch. That's what it was. You're <laughs> correct. Uh, Eternals, Mike. I know we haven't talked about it a lot. Um, we saw it in the theaters the once, but it will be on Disney Plus in less than two weeks on January 12th for everyone to watch. Um, they released a lot of Marvel movies there in a row. Uh, you know, Shang-Chi, mm-hmm. Eternals than spider-man so a lot of people if i would recommend i'd go see shang chi and spider-man theaters eternals uh something that we said you can watch at home and 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 get the the whole thing i'm excited for it to hit home go through it see anything that we missed throughout the whole movie they got a they got a lot of toys that they got uh that they have to offload uh i saw somebody on uh tiktok browsing through the uh 
the toy aisle and looking at the what are they Marvel Legends? Is that yes. the is that kind of like the action figure yeah. line and uh, the nothing but Eternals and not yeah. just like one Eternal like the one that nobody likes like every character from that movie multiples of them on the rack. It, uh, they so, did not quite pierce the uh, through pop culture how they wanted them to. So maybe so, being on free on yeah. Disney Plus will help. Well, I'd also say a lot of those dropped a year ahead of time because of how toy production is. Um, so I know they had a lot sitting out all through, like almost all of 2021 as well. So my guess is nobody, again, it, like you said, didn't pierce pop culture, but like they've just been sitting there because nobody knew who they were or what was going on. Well, That's they the should year. know now the movie has come out, so it has yeah. not worked. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this is also one of those things. I don't know if kids would want to ask to go see, Dear Mom and Dad, can I go see The Eternals? Yeah. It, I'm not it, saying the <laughs> film is, like, not kid-friendly. You know, it's PG-13, yeah. just like any of the other Arnold movies. And, like, there's literally not a sex scene in the movie. I know that yeah. they, they say that there is one, but, like any yeah. kid sees that any given night of the week you know mm-hmm. if they stay up past their bedtime on like cbs right yeah. uh like on their parents favorite like ncis drama uh but yeah not a whole lot to pull out of here <laughs> i'm not saying you got to add like you know furry uh alien like sidekicks to get kids involved but th- there's a lot of uh politics and this, history in this yeah. one that yeah i don't think it's gonna draw the it, kids in it's a dense movie. They're going to be on their Switch playing Diablo, okay? <laughs> so, hey, they're not old enough to play Diablo, Chris. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, Paw Patrol then. How about that? Sure. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think kids are clamoring to see see Eternals, so I think Toys was a, a big mistake. I did see one of the Deviants um, pop vinyls, uh, like the dog-looking Deviant. It's like a mm-hmm. GameStop exclusive. I picked it up. I looked at it, I'm like, oh, this doesn't look cool, and I put it back down. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's saying something for, for my end, Mike. Let's shift out of Marvel gear. Let's go into DC gear because this is the year DC's coming back, right? They've got they've got stuff lined up that looks different, looks interesting, and you know it doesn't have Zack Snyder's name attached to it. So that, well, you've got us. In there. Actually, you bring up a really good point. This is going to be a very strong year for DC. They're going to start with the Peacemaker series here yep. in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, the twelfth. Um, yeah, then hit them with Batman. The Flash and then Aquaman. I mean, those are all huge, heavy hitters. I mean, uh, don't those, forget DC those... Super Pets. That's gonna, and, and Black <laughs> Adam, and Black Adam. Black Adam. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. And isn't wait and and then Dwayne Johnson. He's in uh he's both in both. He's in yeah. Super Pets, right? So yeah, if if any year it was going to be for uh, DC to kind of really break through, uh, this is going to be the yeah. year for them. Yeah, exactly. And and then with that, you know, um, we've not had a solo Batman movie since The Dark Knight Rises. We we've had him. Mm-hmm. Uh, in these other films, you know, since then he, he's tagged along. He was in the, the original Suicide Squad. He was in Batman v Superman, Justice League, Justice League again, but longer. Um, and now he is back with a new Batman um, The with a, a trailer called The Bat and the Cat. And we watched this again right before the beginning of this. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you, for like two and a half minute trailer, I still don't know what the story is, right? Like we know the villain's the Riddler. Mm-hmm. Um, but Batman and Catwoman, Selina Kyle, are teamed up a lot more than I anticipated. Um, I thought this would be more of a solo Batman movie, but um, I, this, I really it don't almost know what's lo- happening. It almost looks like this is the, the second film in the franchise that you would get, right? You know, yeah. that's kind of when you bring in the, the sidekick. But they have the advantage of Batman's been around forever, right? You're not going to uh-huh. have to really explain quite as much. I'm curious what the pitch here is. What makes this Batman movie special right i mean i'm not saying that it can't be good right i like matt reeves the i like the casting this trailer mm-hmm. actually is, looks really intense and really fun i'll i'll go see this movie in theaters because i think batman's really cool right yeah. so i will watch this movie and i'm sure i'll be happy i don't think your but, tv gets dark enough for the dark scenes in the <laughs> yeah but what's the what's the what's the pitch what's the unique thing that sets this because this almost just looks like they're like oh you know, the last time people were really happy with Batman was uh, with Nolan. So kind of let's go back and just make those movies again. I I feel like if I just kind of squint my eyes, this almost looks like the fourth Nolan film. Uh, And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but like I'm almost expecting, there there is a brief line in the trailer 
where uh, um, Bruce says, Alfred, you lied to me. You know, who knows? That could that could mean a million different things. But, you know, if it's about his history, you know, maybe this will they'll bring in the Court of Owls. You know, that's a, a newer addition to the Batman universe that kind of adds kind of a cool villainy to the historics of Batman's origin. That's something that we haven't really seen in yeah. the movies uh, just yet. I know everybody always wants Batman to be a detective, so... Yeah. Uh, who, and, I mean, who knows if we'll get a little bit of that well, or not? He he he's had a couple of crime scenes. We have the Riddler, who tends to, you know, push him a little bit. You know, we haven't had a Riddler since Jim Carrey um, in Batman Forever, who was mostly playing a Joker version of the Riddler. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, we get a, an actual, like, hopefully a a realer Riddler, if you will, played by Paul Dano. Um, you know, I, I, my concern is that hopefully this isn't in the Joker universe. And, like, the whole you lied to me is, like, comes from, like, you know, the Joker's his brother or something like that. Like, because like, <laughs> yeah, that I was guess part what... of the, the Joker movie, right? Like, where he accused Bruce Wayne of, you know, being his dad. The yeah, but I, what would, uh, uh, they would either have to age up Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. Or maybe he gets in, like, a cryo chamber, which is, is very on brand for comic books, right? But right. I don't think it fits in oh, this yeah. well, universe. Well, I don't think he's in this, but, like, if they didn't want to have, if they want to make Joker 2 and he didn't have Batman again, because... They didn't have Batman in the first Joker. Um, they they could get around. my my fe- I hope I hope I'm horribly wrong. <laughs> this is not in the Joker verse. Um, well, well I, I I think we have I think we'll have a, an explanation when we talk yeah. about the next movie here. Yes. Um. It, but the Batman also. Um. I think it was his head of Warner Brothers. He went and said there's a 46 day window between when Batman hits theaters and then when it comes to HBO Max. So. By mid-April, if you've not seen this, you'll be able to watch it on H- on your HBO Max subscription. Which I think that's I, I like a forty-five day window, Mike. I don't know about you, but I think that's like the perfect time for me. Like, mm-hmm. Anything longer than that, I forget about it, or I don't care, or I'm going to pirate it. One of the three. <laughs> um, so forty-five days. Eternals. I think it's just hitting its forty-five day on January twelfth. Um, Batman will hit its forty-five day as well. So very very excited. The Flash is happening finally after changing hundreds of directors um they are rumored uh i believe this might even been in the cast list to feature michael shannon and i can't pronounce her name Anche (laughs) trow it's all right (laughs) it's fine they played general zod and feora ul in man of steel now Mm -hmm. you might be thinking why would they bring in superman into this universe they've already got um not been though they got ben affleck they've got michael keaton as batman's They've got a Supergirl. Why would they need these things? My theory is that they are Supergirl's parents in this movie. Like, this universe isn't um, a cal L universe, but um, the the Supergirl, um, played by, I can't think of her name, is actually the the daughter of General Zod and Feora Ul from the, I mean, the Man of Steel. I mean, that would be pretty cool. Uh, She's got I, brown I, hair. She seems <laughs> to be a little bit moody, like like they, they were. I, I don't know. It's just, just a theory based on this, but... You know that they are bringing everybody into this Flash movie that I can think of at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's great to see uh, Michael Shannon uh, come back. But yeah, I think at the top of the show, uh, I think you made a good point that this Flash movie is going to be the No Way Home of the DC universe, but maybe <laughs> yeah. with larger ramifications. Because mm-hmm. I I believe Ben Affleck has kind of already been confirmed that this is going to be his kind of last outing as the Batman. Uh, and we haven't heard anything about Henry Cavill returning, so it seems like Supergirl yeah. is going to kind of like step in for that. You know, it almost kind of seems like we're kind of like reconfiguring the Justice League. You know, we're kind of swapping out the actors that have left with uh, with new characters. Um, yeah. And and the Flash, it, he's kind of always been like multiversal in a way. He's kind yeah. of got the skills to kind of hop in and out. So it seems it, like it'll be easier to TV kind show. of explain. Yeah, and it'll be easier to explain, right? You know, in Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, we had to concoct, like, a a spell that had gone wrong, and then also, who knows if uh, Loki's adventures were also messing with things, fracturing. They literally had to kill a specific person to kind of get the multiverse to kind of fall in on itself. Uh, And Flash, he just has to gotta go fast. He just has to hunt down that chili dog, and he'll run into another universe. Um, So maybe this will kind of, you know, reset things for us. Yeah, well, and and one of the big comic book points with the Flash was Flashpoint, where he went back in time, prevented his Mm -hmm. mother's death, and ended up resetting the universe on accident for that. So he's got a a huge thing. They even did it, I believe, in the Flash TV show um, multiple Mm -hmm. times. The Mm -hmm. the crisis on Infinite Earths. DC is known for his multiversal stuff more so than Marvel. So I 100% believe this will be um, 
Tell they also, they they, it's like they have everything to lose, but also less to lose, right? So you might as well just like go big and go weird with it. Uh -huh. Exactly, yeah. When you go to other universes, and I believe Michael Keaton, um, uh, this goes right into our next point about multiverses, Mike, and mm -hmm. where this ends up is in Batgirl, the movie that they're working on, that, that's, uh, I believe, HBO Max or possibly theater now. I don't remember if this one got swapped around. Michael Keaton is confirmed to return to Batman for that film as well. So is this Batgirl in the, 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 the Burton verse with Michael Keaton, or is Batgirl post reset and then it's all one universe now where they can rewrite, you know, undo all the stuff they didn't like pre, you know, flashpoint kind of thing. I'll right? take like, a, I'll take a, a, a wild, um, uh, I'll take a wild guess, throw a, a shot in the dark out there that this is our Batman beyond, right? Cause you have the relationship of older Batman with a, with a younger protege. Um, it could be maybe futurized in, in some way to where a Batgirl's uh, costume has more of those Batman beyond influences. Right. You know, I, I you know, I, I guess we, we don't necessarily get a Terry McGinnis out of it, but I mean, uh, I think, I, I think at the end of the day, the coolest thing about Batman Beyond wasn't necessarily uh, Terry McGinnis. It was more of the cool futuristic the bat intro. suit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, who knows? I, Batman Beyond is, is in the future, is in the cards, absolutely 100% for sure. Just don't know exactly when it's going to mm -hmm. happen. But the, the biggest takeaway from that story was always the mentorship, right? So yeah. if you're setting it up here, it seems like maybe a good time to start it. Yeah, and and, and I, yeah, that's that's the interesting part is is this you know, I, I is the the question comes down to is the Flash resetting the universe or is you know he's is Michael Keaton gonna go back to the Burton verse with a new lease on you know life as Batman, and mm -hmm. that's where Batgirl takes place. I don't know, I I assume they probably want one unified um story front going forward uh, that works well for everybody, uh, a la Marvel. But you know this is Flash and and Batgirl are way to bring back these favorite actors in those roles. We really enjoyed them as for that. All right. We're at the end of the news portions. We're going to be talking about stuff. The matrix Hawkeye book of Boba Fett in that order. Um, we'll talk spoiler free about, you know, some of these at the start, but most of this is going to be spoilers. So if you don't want to jump through time codes, just make sure you watch this stuff, come back and, and, and listen, mm -hmm. or you can jump down to the other shows. Cause I, I believe uh, Hawkeye was a finale book of Boba Fett's an intro. Those are pretty digestible. Matrix may not be up your alley. We totally understand. So, um, Mike, you just finished Resurrections. Was it yesterday or two days ago? Uh, I've lost track of time here at the end of the year, but very recent. <laughs> very recently. Because he said, I just watched Resurrections, and I thought he meant Ghostbusters. And then about an hour ago, two hours ago, we realized he meant Go Matrix, not Ghostbusters. And I'm, I'm just an <laughs> idiot. So I've been sitting here thinking... This this guy watched Ghostbusters and tell me this son of a bitch, and, and he's over there thinking, did Chris actually watch Matrix? I don't remember now. So yeah, I swear a, when we were in person, you told me you watched I, this movie already. I watched it the day it came out, so I've I've, I've been on it for a couple weeks now, um, mm -hmm. sitting on it for a couple weeks. Um, I I'm a Matrix head. I love the original movies, like the the first you know the first one really hit me at a right point when I was growing up. I I love technology. I love that kind of stuff. Love the video games. Um, Mike, uh, you want to go first? You want me to go first? How do you want to handle this? Uh, this you know, I, I'll lay down my spoiler free review first because you're more of the Matrix aficionado. And I feel like yeah. I'm kind of just out here on the outskirts of it. Uh, I've uh, I was lucky enough to uh, have the, the fortitude to go on YouTube and look for a recap of the <laughs> uh, original trilogy. That was very helpful. Uh, my wife really needed it, too, because she had totally she, she was like, I don't know if I ever watched the third movie. And I was like, well, I'm glad we watched the recap because I feel like I missed a lot of the machinations of the movie. I remember at the end of the trilogy, uh, Keanu becomes like full Messiah and the machines take mm -hmm. him away. But we we're kind of just left on like a big question mark after that. So, I, like I said, I'm not the huge, I'm not the biggest Matrix fan, so I think that kind of maybe softened uh, the blow for me overall because I know Matrix Resurrections is super polarizing out there right now. Some people think it's the worst thing ever made. I think some people are digging it, and I think I'm on the side of digging it, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I kind of enjoyed some of like the meta commentary that uh, Lana Wachowski brought to the film, like literally making... Um, uh, comments on the uh, kind of almost the production of this specific film, yeah. and also like it they, reminded they name me when, Warner Brothers. They named yeah. Warner Brothers. 
<laughs> and it reminded me uh, on the show here when we talked about that um, that Matrix reboot that was supposed to star Michael B. Jordan. And yeah. we always talk about that whiteboard at Warner Brothers that just has his name on it and that just circles drawn because they just want him in anything. So it was kind of funny to see that referenced slightly. Uh, you know, I was just down for it. They added some unique things to the Matrix world that wasn't in the previous incarnations, like, you know, talking about technology and, like, mm -hmm. advancements of machines in general. Uh, I totally get it now, Chris, if you hop on and give me your spoiler-free review and just say, like, you hated everything about it and it never should have been made and mm -hmm. it, it's the worst piece of trash. Like, I, I'm not even going to fight you nope. on it, but, like, <laughs> I actually I actually had, like, a good time watching it. Maybe not the the best uh, kung fu I had ever seen in, yeah. kind of uh, in, a, in a Matrix film, but uh, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm positive on it. Uh, I, I would watch another one, but they do kind of leave it ambiguous at the end it, if it, there's going to be more or not. It ends exactly like the first one does, like mm -hmm. identical to the first one where the, it it's not over, but like it ends at the same time kind of thing. It's very yeah. interesting. I will say I don't hate this like uh, a lot of other people do. I, I, I don't. I, I actually lean probably. I had a good time with it. Um, you know, I think I think I brought this up, you know, to you. This is a very the original Matrix. When you go back and watch it is gritty. It's on film. You see the grain. Mm -hmm. You feel the grain. Right. Like it feels like, you know, when they talk about going into the Matrix, it feels like the whole movie changes a little bit. And this mm -hmm. is because it's in 2021, 2022. It's cleaner. It's a cleaner film. It's very, like, used, the production is, you know, um, 4K, 8K. You know, everything's, you know, the resolution's much better. It doesn't feel, like, grimy like the original Matrix did. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of miss that a little bit. Um, but overall, I, I'm going to liken this to your review of Don't Look Up. This is the most meta movie I've ever seen <laughs> like in a very long time. Like it's self-referential uh, of itself, of its, you know, the, th the three movies beforehand, the world it's created, the cult of people it's created, the production of the film, the writing of the film, how, how games, video games are even made, you know, is, is paired <laughs> in here with a fun appearance uh, came here by Christina Ricci. I don't know if you caught that or not. Um, no, I didn't. She's 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 got the Bob haircut in the conference room when they're going through like, you know, you know what this next game needs kind of thing. She's, she's oh one of, yeah 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 yep yeah, she's she's in there, um you know there are and this shows the, I thought this was just the trailer, um and I don't think it's a spoiler but this is just a kind of prepper those scenes where they flash back between the previous movies and this movie are actually in the movie like those that is not just for the trailers yeah and that kind of that kind of took me. Out of, out of it a little bit, but you know, I, I kind of get what what it was doing along the way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I I think it's 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 good. I, I'm I'm not I'm not complaining about it. I'm I've sat and thought about it more than I thought, which I think is you know a sign like I've actually enjoyed it a little bit more. I've just got to think about it to kind of compress from this movie because it is a lot. It's a lot coming in there, and you know, as a fan of the first one, trying to draw the lines between the first three movies and then you know 20 years later where this comes up but uh yeah. overall i think if you're fans of the first one this this i could exactly see how this is going to be polarizing but if you like the first mm -hmm. ones i think you've got to add this to the repertoire you can't you can't just ignore it because you know it is it is part of the matrix and it explains how the first three get to this one very very yeah. easily so well before before we uh step out of the the matrix let's kind of transition into the uh, spoiler full yeah. section of yes. the podcast everything from here on out is going to be spoilers for Matrix Resurrections, Hawkeye, Book of Bo Boba Fett. Um, uh, it, it was really funny to hear these direct references of turning the Matrix trilogy into a video game that Neo was coding in another version of the Matrix, and they're just like totally digging in on Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, just all about originality. Do we even need to make this? What is the Matrix? Uh, I enjoyed all of the meta-ness. I liked yeah. how they were literally putting the conversations that they were having about what should this movie be in the movie itself. <laughs> like the yeah. whole, like, <laughs> like watching passenger. like these kind of, yeah. yeah, like watching these like video game, like uh, douchebags trying to be like, what is the, it's all about bullet time. And then later yeah. even like Neil Patrick Harris brings up bullet time in a serious tone. It was yeah. just so, it's so weird that it worked to me. Right. Like there is a total version. Uh, th I mean, there is, a, there is a version of this movie where all of this is awful because there's people that are talking about the same stuff we're talking about, yeah. but they hated all of it. But I just happened 
to, to really like it. It was just it's well, just it's just wild. It, it also works because I think every actor in this believes in what they're doing. Like I think they all mm-hmm. sell what they're what what they're doing because I think if any of them for a split second kind of wavered or their their the quality of their acting there we wouldn't buy it either but like everybody i think brought their a game even counter reese who shaved and his hair and beard for for the the real life scenes which i was mm. kind of in, impressed with i think he was filming that at the same time he was doing um bill and ted three because i think he had a he shaved his beard for that too and he was mm. bald in one of those gotcha yeah i was trying to figure out man his hair grows back really quickly because when yeah. he was doing press for this film he looked like john wick yeah. again so yeah. i was i was pretty so, impressed um i like yeah. how um you know because when you're making this movie and you have to literally go back into the matrix and into the real world of the machines you have to drag all that conflict back up you know they kind of made it part of the story where he was just like well what was the point of my sacrifice if like literally nothing changed oh. but we do get to see some change like zion is safer uh, the I machines, know. yeah, they've uh, his sacrifice gave the machines the ability to become basically to sen- sentient in a way to choose. So yeah. I actually liked it. I know some people were turned off by this weird like robot bird that was like flying around and being nice to people, but I was like, okay. And then I love the little uh, magnetic pixel thingies yeah. that let programs step into the real world because I was getting a little worried that they were going to pull a uh, Tron legacy, right? Yeah. And they're actually going to give flesh gonna to the programs. Ro- robot. Yeah. And it, and who knows if that could be in a in a future installment of the franchise, but I do like how it's just like, no, they don't have to have flesh. They just need to be able to manipulate the environment around them. So mm-hmm. seeing a Morpheus being a a set of cubes and a yeah. program. I don't know. It's just it just all worked for me. It's just strange. Like well, I would never would have thought that I would have wanted this or liked it, but I'm I'm down to watch another one. I don't know if Ke- I don't know if Keanu's going to be in it or not, but yeah. uh, it seems like they're kind of putting more of the kind of coolness on that new character. What was her name? Uh, oh, with the Bugs. Blue Bugs. Yeah, I liked her character. I I, I could yeah. see I could watch more of her. Yeah, and, and that's Jessica Henwick from um, Iron Fist. If you um, oh played. yeah, you're right. Yep. Wow. Yep. Um. So I, I would say there I enjoy that you know again this is 60 years in the future um so there are there's at least one person remaining from the original trilogy um, with the the worst makeup i think i've ever old makeup i've ever seen that's yeah. one thing that i couldn't quite look past but you know yeah it's okay. whatever it's, it's, it's the matrix um so that i think there's a couple things i like how the movie also opened with the same scenes from the original movie like mm-hmm. but like you get to see new scenes from like a third person's point of view like watching it happen um it sucks that all the people were recast um for that they didn't just reuse the first footage and like place that in there um but that's fine the complaints i have is one the action scenes is just him holding his hands up and manipulating (laughs) stuff in the air which he's a he's force field guy for this movie he he Cal's age is showing where he's not doing the martial arts like he used to in the first one, right? And I think that visceralness, the camera shots cut way too much. If you go back and watch the original ones, the, the, the shots linger on the fight scenes, and you can tell they learned how to fight like that, right? Like, it was much mm-hmm. better. This one, it's just more of a quick cut, quick cut. We probably have some some pl- you know, some some know replacement actors here for some of these shots. Didn't really feel it. Um, I also really wish I would have seen more of trinity side of her life in the matrix rather than just she goes to this coffee shop and she's married with kids like mm-hmm. what does her day-to-day look like we see neo's day-to-day but not trinity's day-to-day and it sounds like she's setting out her you know she's been set to be like a big part of anything going forward as well with mm-hmm. this and then um you know lastly uh there's you mentioned bullet time bullet time looks shittier in this movie than the previous ones <laughs> there's like some sort of weird like fade to it like a motion blur to neil patrick harris when he's like walking around in it but my question is um how did um oh the guy who played agent smith in this one right mm-hmm. how did he break the bullet time barrier he just walked in there and he's like well now you can't control me well yeah yeah, but how do you get around <laughs> yeah. this? Like, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. quite like I didn't quite understand that as much as I, I want to because I think he's a great character, but I don't think they utilize him to his potential. 
Yeah, th there is kind of some, there's a little bit of like hand waving that happens in this film where you're just like, well, if this is all based on kind of like on the rules of like a machine of an algorithm, this all should be very well explained. But then, you know, you just kind of wave the hand like, no, it's just the matrix. It's just the matrix. Yeah. We can't, we can't yeah. explain everything. So yeah, not a perfect movie by no. a mile, but like, like I said, strangely enough, yeah. I yeah, had a good time. Was, and was in a lot more than I thought he would be. Yeah, I, mean, I thought he was just going to be a bit of like a side character, but he yeah. was like the villain. Yeah, he was the villain, and he just oozed computer tech villain kind of thing too. So uh -huh. that was really fun. Um, but yeah, it was very much if you like if you like playing video games, I think you'll get a good kick out of this one as well. There's a lot of video game stuff in here. Yeah, I mean, if I had to be one of those uh, video game uh, board member people talking about what is the Matrix, I think what the Matrix Matrix was originally, it was just groundbreaking right it wasn't mm. about a specific thing that was in any of the movies it was just that it was different it was fresh and it was exciting at, so at, at uh, the point i could of, see well it was that so at the point where technology was becoming more commonplace too like it hit at the yeah. right time yeah so i could get somebody watching this movie going like well, where's kind of like we're seeing all of kind of these original beats from the uh, trilogy like yeah bullet time was cool but like because it was original. Now we're just getting more of it. We're also getting more of those like force fields and stuff. I think the coolest thing that shocked me the most in this movie was like when um, they were people were jumping out of buildings and becoming bombs. Mm -hmm. Like I just thought that was really cool. I was like, this is a weird thing I'd see in like an anime or something, and they put yeah. it on screen. So there was some kind of stuff that did make me go like, oh wow, that is, that is neat. But we were kind of treading. Uh, old ground at, at a lot of points in the movie it, and, and i think it did so on purpose uh without technically doing so um yeah did you did you stay through the the end credit the yeah credit which scene? i have to i have to complain uh <laughs> with hbo max because the freaking ui slot like is like so sensitive like as soon as the movie ended and like the first name popped up on the credits, kind of when the the feeling of the movie is like washing over you, and you're about to hear like the end the end score, like the fucking like slider slides up at the bottom and is recommending me a thousand videos. Like hey, the first name of the credits just popped up, and I'm sure that person didn't want their name covered by UI. Yeah. So it went away, and then we fast forwarded to the end to watch the 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 post credit scene, which is very quick. I don't even think it's more than sixty seconds long. Yeah, it's and like then maybe the last. <laughs> the last couple seconds of it, bam, covered up by UI. So it's like, I've got so distracted. So I was like, yeah. come on, HBO Max. It, you know this is a huge movie for you. It's like the last big budget movie that you're going to get day and date. Like, well, maybe have your engineers double check what it looks like actually watching the movie. Well, I think I, I, I think it was fun because it's like, internet, and your movies are dead, games are dead, narrative dead. All we need are cat videos, and we'll call them yeah. cat tricks. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, as a cat owner, I'm like, I understand this. This is fun. So <laughs> Chris gets it. I get it. So yeah, so that that's our, our Matrix Resurrections. Uh, it's free on HBO Max for it's been out what two weeks now. So I think two more weeks before it goes mm -hmm. on hiatus. So um, get in there, and get your get your one month in, binge some stuff, and and then uh, you can check it out. Or it'll be back on there permanently. I think by March. I think at the latest. So there's that. Let's jump into Hawkeye, the season finale. We haven't even talked about this. I didn't even know if you've watched this yet. That's my concern. I, I finally watched it uh, when we got back from the holidays. I, Luckily, nothing was really spoiled. There's not a. I guess there's not a whole lot to really spoil yeah. because we got the reveal of the Kingpin in yes. episode five. So I guess the conclusion was what the big mystery was, but there wasn't like one specific thing that somebody could spoil yeah. on Twitter for me. And luckily yeah. Twitter was busy talking about a lot of other things that week. So I, I made it safely through. Yeah. Yeah. So Hawkeye again, spoiler reminder, we're just going to jump into spoilers. Episode six. I, to me, the season of Hawkeye is probably one of the best seasons of Marvel TV we've had. Um, I, I it, it could have easily been a movie probably, but I like the the you know the six episode structure. It had fun reveals, it had fun characters, it was a good time, a good jaunt with a time frame to get home by Christmas. Uh Haley Seinfeld knocked out of the park as Kate Bishop, you know, Jeremy mm -hmm. Renner steps back into Hawkeye. Um again the return of Kingpin, the MCU version of Kingpin. I don't think this is the the Netflix version because he ripped literally ripped a door off a car. Um <laughs> in this one i don't think i think he's a little stronger and he took an arrow to the sternum as well so i think this is a little more uh comic booky slash mcu version of of uh kingpin um 
you know, we get to see the reveal, you know, of, of Echo kind of kicking off her series as well in this, you know, turning. Hawkeye's probably got the biggest kill count of any Avenger in the Avengers after this episode as well. He killed a lot of people in that hockey rink with Kate Bishop. <laughs> um, but I want to talk about the end of this. I, I, I wanted to to talk about Echo's thing because I, I've been saving this because I wanted to talk to you about it. The okay. ending, Echo holds Kingpin at gunshot. And literally the camera pans up and you hear two gunshots, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we are to assume that he is dead. We didn't see a body. I don't think he's dead. I think Echo... Um, in the comic books, Echo literally shoots Kingpin in the face, and then you see him alive later with like patches over his eyes. He got like an eye transplant or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this, one, I think he she shot each of his ears and made him deaf to live like she does, and that's her payback to the Kingpin. It's like you are now you know crippled like me. Like you know mm-hmm. you have you have this ability not you you can't hear anymore like me. But I have the advantage because I've lived my whole life like this and I know how to work with it. But you don't. So I think when the Echo series comes out. Vincent D'Onofrio will be in that series as Kingpin, but mm. without my, the ability my, to hear. My theory was, you know, like you said, they explicitly don't show the death. And even if he was going to die, a Disney Plus series wouldn't show like the bullet go yeah. through and through. Um, but it seems like they definitely obfuscated it. So I, I don't think he's dead, but I think maybe Daredevil got involved, right? You know, mm. Daredevil is all about uh, justice. You know, as much as he would love to kill the Kingpin in all of his story arcs, I think most of the time, unless there's a a story that I'm missing, you know, he wants to deliver justice, not revenge and death. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe in that alleyway, you know, we see uh, Charlie Cox uh, jump down there and maybe uh, kick the gun out of the hand or something along those lines. That would be my guess overall. Um, I I think they'd have to show that in Echo from another angle and build him in. Yeah, they could. Yeah. They could show it, uh, but I, I think overall, I'm, I think I'm a little bit more lukewarm on the series as a whole, which I, I wish wasn't the case. Uh, one of the the great things that they did do is kind of get Haley Steinfeld off the ground as Kate Bishop. Amazing Kate Bishop. I love her chemistry with Florence Pugh in these last two episodes. Mm. It's probably my favorite single thing about the series. I love it when they're just kind of like chasing after each other where like Florence Pugh like doesn't want to hurt her. She's... But, you know, you get, get out of my way, kid. I'm trying to get a job done. I, 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 I thought that was really funny. Um uh, but I don't think they did a very good job making any of the the crime very intriguing or interesting. The mystery was never too exciting to me. And the watch, which ended up, you know, being uh, Hawkeye's uh, wife's watch, I felt like they should have maybe paid more attention to this specific plot point, right? You know, if it was all about, you know, recovering this watch to keep his family safe, mm-hmm. they really didn't harp on it talk about it that much even though it was that big of a deal like it didn't even seem it didn't even seem like really kate bishop even cared about the watch at all so uh and then uh, yeah to talk i didn't really like any of the kingpin stuff i'm kind of sad to say uh maybe they can retcon it and explain like why the kingpin was more like his comic book self because in a live action setting it's kind of a little bit unbelievable for me to watch right like he got shot in the chest with an arrow i was like okay well maybe he's wearing like kind of like one of those suits that he wore yeah. in the daredevil show that has kind of like that super strong fiber like that kevlar or whatever it was okay i could see that you know arrow not happening but then he rips off a a car door i'm like okay well now in the in the world of the MCU he has to be like super powered in some way to pull off a car door. Like there's no way around it. He can't just be a normal big dude that pulls off a car door. So like, is he going to be like powered by like the super zero, the superhero serum or something like that? I don't know. Like maybe that, maybe if I go back and rewatch this after some things are explained in the future, I'll get it. But like, I just, I just thought it was handled kind of weird. It was just like, let's just throw the Kingpin in because he has a little bit of gravitas and we don't have to work for it. Like we'll put King, we'll put Vincent D'Onofrio on screen and you know, Know, people will go crazy on Twitter, but we'll just kind of, you know, oh, it's, end it, it this ambiguously. Is, this is easy setup for future stuff. I think, you know, again, we are in spoiler territory. Charlie Cox being in the MCU as Daredevil, uh, or MCU at least, probably be as Daredevil. This one that Vincent D'Onofrio is Kingpin. I think, again, I think they're setting up for the, the, the Echo TV show as well. Um, Daredevil will probably be in She Hulk. He might be in Echo. That, that's, that's, you know, wouldn't wouldn't be a stretch. I think they're trying to set these ground level people a little better. But 
I think if you just make him like he was in the Netflix stuff, because, you know, I don't think he is the Netflix version. I think this is an MTU version. The Netflix stuff didn't happen. It is perfectly fine. Like, they can they can make him a little stronger because he needs to set himself off a little bit. You know, there are people doing, you know, really crazy shit in the MTU. Um, it's fine if he's just a little bit stronger. And they, well, they might they may talk about it. He has been known to be a boxer in the past. You know, a strong man. So it doesn't it doesn't bother me at the, the end of the day. I, I think to me, the watch thing is interesting. I agree with you. The watch thing should be handled a little more better with the gravitas. The big reveal is she's Agent 19, which makes her Mockingbird, which makes Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. not happen in this timeline. So Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is technically happening in another universe now mm-hmm. with this set because she's not. Bobby Morse, we already know Bobby Morse. We have a Mockingbird in, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? So mm-hmm. that shows that you know she's Mockingbird. I think that leaves it a little bit open. I don't think, I mean, what little bit Linda Cardellini did here, I, I don't think we'll get a history. But if they do a season two of Hawkeye, which they've really, you know, they've set themselves open for, they, they have an opportunity to, to visit some more stuff, maybe not necessarily down the watch lane, but it could show her, you know, some flashbacks of what, what she's done and why it's important to keep her identity safer than mm-hmm. Hawkeye's. I, I don't know. Um, but I agree. I, I think um, I, I enjoyed the again. We talked about the, when they use the crazy arrows. We got to see them make and use a bunch of arrows, including the mm-hmm. Stark Tech arrow. I think the pin one was actually probably one of my funnier ones. Whenever he she shrunk the van, then the mm-hmm. owl took it and flew off with the van. And they're like, "What do we do about it? like that? Yeah, no, not our problem now." Um, <laughs> I, I just like his his nonchalantness about it, and then you know the fact that he was able to to work it out with Yelena kind of set them down down the right path. I'm. I thought she was going to be with them at the Christmas dinner, um, honestly. Like, Yelena was going to go with them as well. Um, I thought that would have been a good touch on the end there to have them all. But, um, yeah, I, I honestly, I'm, I feel like this is, you know, after, you know, What If was meh. Um, you know, Loki is good. But I, I think this is probably one of my favorite ones of the year. And I think, I think Hawkeye, I don't think he'll get a movie but i wouldn't be surprised if kate bishop does and he kind of shows up for a little bit right like a more of a mentor like a like what was it tony stark did homecoming kind of thing mm-hmm. like and then you well, know we kind of sunset jeremy renner as yeah. a whole well what well one thing that we have kind of learned somewhat recently from the mcu and feige is that they are more reactionary than we kind of thought they were right you know we were under the impression that they have these really long roadmaps they know exactly where they want to go but we've learned a little bit more that they kind of wait to see what the audience likes and then they kind of pivot and go from there. So, yeah, I never would have guessed it, uh, back in the day that we could possibly, you know, see a Hawkeye movie. But, you know, if they're seeing good engagement and numbers mm-hmm. on their platform that, you know, all the Hawkeye series well, did well, Haley I Seinfeld wouldn't be surprised. engagement across every platform. Oh, so like, yeah. Oh, I mean, like I just I didn't even know she was in her while you one came. of the best shows of the year. And she was in there. So, yeah, yeah she is. Uh, she is. Uh, uh, being catapulted to a uh, mega stardom for sure, so it would it would make sense to put her on the big screen at some point in yeah. time. Whether it, Jim, Jeremy Renner's there or not, I, I'm not sure, but we'll yeah. be seeing her. Yeah, I mean, like I think he could be like you know, put him as the guy in the chair kind of thing, right? Like, you mm-hmm. know, you're young, you're you're cocky, but you know, like you don't have the the secret agent skill my skill set yet. You weren't trained by Shield kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be interesting. I, I think she's a, she's a great you know be grateful for quote unquote the young Avengers if they ever come together down the road. Um, Mm -hmm. She's also the same age, you know, as Spider-Man it would be in this universe, right? Like he just went to college and she's, you know, was in college and got kicked out kind of thing. So she was like, she was in her junior year, I want to say. Yeah. Um, So yeah, she would be roughly in, in kind of Peter's wheelhouse. Yeah, exactly. Which would be, you know, I could see them having, them having great banter would be really fantastic. I think they could really hit off some of that stuff. Now I don't need to see a whole movie with a spider person and someone with a bow and arrow, but you know, I think in, in if they do like a small mini series of like you know, younger Avengers characters, they could do that for sure. So um yeah, I, I think it's I think it's great you're more lukewarm on it, but I think, you know, overall, you know, I think this is a if I could say an improvement over what if and, and Falcon and Winter Soldier this year for sure. I think this was Definitely set a really good course for the future of the MCU. Uh, were you able to watch the Book of Boba Fett, Mike? I didn't. I don't know if I asked. Yes, you I know. have. <laughs> good, because that came out this week as well. That was a. Mm-hmm. I, I, uh, I had to work Wednesday, um, and I was like, the worst part about episode ones of all these shows is like something's gonna get revealed at the end of it, right? Like, there's never not a reveal in an episode one. So I was like, I'm gonna get spoiled all day. 
and then um come to find out not really much reveal in this in this yeah. episode this like, this re- this really yeah after watching this episode this really the title makes a lot more sense right this really does feel like the book of boba fett like we're just kind of getting a a kind of a summation of this character's life right you know we got to see how he escaped the sarlacc pit and yes i have seen the viral mashup of pat oswald on parks and rec explaining how he his uh, gauntlet comes out of the maw of the sarlacc i've seen the side by sides i thought that was pretty funny i wonder if maybe if that was done on purpose uh, or if like that's just the most iconic way to show a character leaving that's, a sarlacc pick right that's how you, you get know? out of the sarlacc pit there's only one way in and out <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh and then you know i wasn't expecting it to kind of have like this uh this dual setup right where we're going to see him in the present but also kind of him i With i'm guessing i'm yeah yeah the, i keep calling them sand people they're not sand people they're like you said they're raiders well, they are sand uh, wh- people but they're, they're, their what? official name is tuscan raiders Oh, gotcha. Do you remember the name of the of the big woolly things that they ride? Yeah, banthas. I kept thinking that banthas. That's what they were. I was like, what are those things called? Yeah, we got to see some banthas, some mm-hmm. more of those CG kind of dog things that we saw yeah. in the yeah. Mandalorian. Anyway. So, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say there's anything particular to, to really pull out of this. I mean, the, it wasn't it wasn't bad. It was the, just kind of like. All right. <laughs> there, there are two things about this episode that stand out to me. One is they didn't subtitle a single Tuscan Raider sound. Like they literally mm. did the sounds for the whole time he was with them, and I think that shows you know goes to show a lot like how you know the dialect and, and and like the actors in those roles are are portraying with their body language and you know mm-hmm. the intonation. So I was really impressed that they didn't decide to just do that for for you know convenience's sake for that. Mm. Um, and I think that's going to be a, a running thread of like, he might have, he might use the Tuscan Raiders down the road in another episode to possibly fight what I believe is the Crimson Dawn, which was the crime syndicate that surrounded him and Finnick Shand in the streets. Mm-hmm. Um, because the Crimson Dawn deals with, remember it was Darth Maul and, uh, Kira, uh, who played with Amelia Clark and Solo. Um, I believe that's that crime syndicate coming through this as well. Uh, in a recent Star Wars comic book, the Crimson Dawn stole Han Solo and Carbonite from Java, and Boba Fett went and got it back from them. So he might have it out. They might have it out for him overall, as well. Um, I did say early on, I'm like, how does he go from like a crusty, burnt man to someone looking so fresh and so clean? Well, they show uh, he starts with him in the back to tank, like he's gonna mm-hmm. be in the back to tank. Now, do you think he will live beyond this show, Mike, or do you think this this show will be the life and death? Of Boba Fett post. Mm, I mean, I feel like if Boba Fett is going to die after they've kind of redeemed the character in a way, which is kind of weird saying redeemed because he was just really a one-off character in the original trilogy, right? Not a whole yeah. lot of screen the, time. The mystery of him intrigued everybody. Yeah. It seems like if he was going to die narratively, it would have to be to die for something. Yeah. And we haven't really built his character up enough to have him die for something. Like, he's not going to die for... Um, for Ming Ning Wah. Is that how you say her name? Did I say yeah, that Finnick right? Shand. Ming Ning uh, right. Yeah, like he's not going to sacrifice himself for her. They don't really have that much of a relationship. Yet. It's not like they've introduced like a child or a kid or something. Yeah. Well, they so, did. It, uh, wait. The kid, the kid Tuscan Raider, like he was protecting. Oh, from the, yeah. From the but Goro I, I, looking creature. Uh, oh, but I don't imagine like him, no, it's not gonna be him laying yeah. down his life. I, I mean, unless if these in these flashbacks, they show that he really comes to love. Yeah the sand people and their culture. And then maybe there's like some sort of plot to like wipe them off the planet and he sacrificed himself. Maybe I could see that. He is, he's very, it's come to show that he's a noble fighter uh, more than Mm -hmm. just a bounty hunter. It's coming to, I think that's what they're trying to portray. Like you said, when you say redeem, they're trying to show he's, he's noble. Like he's not Mm -hmm. just a killer. Yeah. He wants to rule through, uh, respect and not fear. Uh, this kind of seems like a, um, uh, you know when in a video game franchise they make kind of like a spin-off game that it's it's still fun, still has the same visuals, but you know the game's a little bit shorter and mm-hmm. um, Miles Morales. you know it, <laughs> yeah, it kind of or the uh, that one uncharted game. I forgot the one with the um, with oh, yeah. the uh, with Fortune the female characters. Yeah, for thieves, uh, thieves honor. I, I don't remember what it's yeah. called, fortune or whatever. It kind of seems like one of those. Like this doesn't really seem like required viewing, but it seems like you know it could be a fun time, 
So Th- they're uh, probably going to do something at the end of this that make it tie into the rest of like the main yeah, and the other shows. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll come back and I'll be watching it every week. But no, it, uh, like you said, no big like baby Yoda moment yeah, really coming out of this first episode. Super short. The first episode I think was like maybe thirty minutes without credits mm-hmm. at, the, at the end of the day, and they're like, oh. Uh, you know, again, Robert Rodriguez directed it. It's good. Um, my favorite moment in this, Mike, you will probably not be surprised. Max Rebo makes his return. Um, oh, the DJ? Yeah, yeah, he's playing the drums, the big blue elephant guy. In, in <laughs> oh, the, the in blue the elephant. Club. Okay. Yeah, Max Rebo, he got a gig, man, and he's, he's <laughs> playing those gigs. So and He's just out there trying to pay his rent while everybody else is trying to save the galaxy. That's right. My ears perked up when I saw Max Rebo. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, that's, that's when I was like, all right, you've got me in. Um, you know, a, another thing is um, – Matt Barry from the uh, the IT crowd is the voice of the droid. Uh, yeah, and if so you're not familiar with Matt Barry, you might know him more from what we do in the Shadows uh, show. He's a uh, Laszlo. He's great. Uh, yeah. Matt Barry is amazing. <laughs> yeah, Matt Barry. He does he, anything he does. He's got such a distinct voice, so that was fun. Yeah, that he was. He the, was that the actor that plays the kind of emissary for the was it for the mayor or something. Um, he comes yeah. to basically say like, no, we're not giving you any, any Where's gifts. Our tribute? You, need, yeah. you need to give us a gift. Uh, that actor looked really familiar. I looked him up. He was a character in a show that got canceled that I really like called Lodge 49, mm-hmm. which, uh, also starred, um, I already forgot his name. He plays, um, he plays, uh, what's his face in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Wow. I can't remember Wyatt anything Russell. right now. Yeah. Wyatt Russell. That's right. So I was like, oh, okay. So that guy, I like that actor. So. Uh, yeah, moving forward, uh, maybe we can get a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, it's a slow bit, start. It's a, a little bit, slow just, start just a just a little bit more. Just I just want a little bit more. That's all. So yeah, yeah, and I think it will. I think it'll deliver. Um, but you know, again, our eyes are, are, and our hearts are set on Boba Fett coming out later, later this year, or not Boba Fett, Obi Wan later this year. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's fine. I, I mean, like I said, there's really not a lot to spoil on this other than the fact that it was just, hey, here's some flashbacks of him being a. A prisoner after getting out of the Starlight Pit, and here he is, you know, trying to be different than Java by actually being like, "I walk among the people, don't carry me," kind of thing. And, mm-hmm. But that, that was about it. Yeah, I agree. So, yep. Next week, uh, we I don't know if we'll cover these every week, Mike, but it might be something if we feel like the episode requires it. We might pull the pull these into the end of the episode discussions. Uh, I think that's it. That's it for the for the week for the for the beginning of the year. I think it's pretty pretty good uh start of the year mike if uh, people know what you're up to what you're doing where can they find you at well they can follow me at mike royer design on instagram twitter and tiktok and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com chris if people want to catch up with you in this calendar year of 2022 where can they find you you can find me on twitter valdan v-a-l-d-a-n or instagram valdan 87 people know about the show where they can get ready for all those upcoming movie reviews we're doing this year probably some tv show reviews other stuff next episodes where can they find that at oh you just gotta head on over to superhero slate.com that's the best place to find all the avenues we host our show and to get our kick-ass show notes so if you want to see the trailer for the batman or doctor strange we got those links over there in our show notes you can find us on apple Podcasts, youtube spotify wherever else you love to listen to find podcasts like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can get merch at superheroslate.com slash store. We love hearing from you. Reach out and let us know what was your most favorite thing in 2021. What are you looking forward to in 2022? Uh, what did you think about Matrix Resurrections? Because that seems to be a coin flip out there into the world of pop culture. Uh, and if you want to be a super fan of the show, so easy to do. Just share the show with a friend. Share the show with a buddy. Make sure you're staying safe and healthy out there staying up to date on your vaccines and we will be here every week this year folks that's right every week and we will see you guys next week bye thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe